G'day, chaps. I'm sorry, I can't help but laugh a little bit. This is... You weren't expecting this. You were not expecting me to show off a game like this. Um, but I'm very glad to be able to play this with you. Sid Meier's Colonization, the original, the classic, the absolute classic, was one of my favourite games ever. Ever, 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 ever. I absolutely love this game. And I played... Oh, I don't even know how many hours of this thing. I, I started playing this when I was an early teen, I guess. So you're talking about 20 years ago. So this game, this game's pretty old. It's pretty old. I remember playing this. I used to go around to a, a friend's house and, and play it on his machine. We used to sit down and play it together. I'd just totally geek out. It was like, it was my secret pleasure just nerding out on this game. <laughs> Um, but I absolutely love it. Um, so, yeah, I just bought it on Steam. It was like two US dollars. And it works. It actually works. I can't believe it. It's running in DOSBox. Um, I'm going to customize this. I'm going to play this uh, as if I were playing normally. But, um, I'm going to go for... I'll go for pretty much the standard settings. I'll go for warm. And I always used to play this on Viceroy and I always used to play on with the Dutch because they have trade and if you don't know about this game this game is all about trading and um, I'll read this for you the Protestant Dutch provinces gained their independence from Catholic Spain during the age of expansion a maritime country of fishermen and merchants the Dutch Netherlands operated large merchant and fishing fleets in the North Sea and the Baltic Upon achieving political independence in the early 17th century, this tiny nation found itself ideally poised to expand its overseas trade into lucrative new markets in the Far East and New World. Unlike their rivals and sometime enemies, the Spanish, French and English, the Dutch were ruled by their merchant class. This unique arrangement led them to focus all aspects of state, diplomatic, military and economic policy around the interests of trade. Their strategy proved quite successful and the Dutch economy and merchant fleet expanded so rapidly that the other European powers felt compelled to take drastic measures against the Dutch in order to prop up their own less successful enterprises. And this is all true. It's, considering how small the Netherlands was, it's amazing that they managed to conquer as much as they did. The Dutch East Indies, for example, uh, was a huge country. I think you're talk, basically talking about Indonesia, I believe. Um... So yeah, they, as a power, they have uh, better commodity prices. Prices don't collapse as much. In the year of our Lord, 1492. Let's see if this plays through properly. Yeah, here we go. An expedition led by the Great Viceroy, Game and 8. That music as well. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Brings back so many memories. Left Amsterdam on a voyage of discovery. So this was always my go-to game. Um, this was always the game that I would go back and play when I wanted to relax. Um, because for strategy, this for me is, is, is pretty much the perfect balance of trade and strategy and military. Um, and it's turn-based as well, so it's completely relaxing. And it's got the exploration aspect to it too. You start off, I'm going to skip this part now, but you start off, as you can see here, knowing absolutely nothing about the world you're surrounded in. Um, now there are a few tricks to starting off here. What should we call this? The Gamer Nation. Blech. I'm sure that's never been used before, ever. <laughs> so it is uh, It's turn-based, and if you really want to succeed at this game, the key, if you're playing on the hardest difficulty, is to find the Aztecs and Incas, and or Incas, very, very quickly. Um, they, uh, we found the Spanish. The Spanish are extremely aggressive, and because we're playing this on the hardest difficulty, we're going to try to avoid 
the other European powers. Ah, here we go. So we found the Aztecs, and we are close to the Spanish. So this this presents a bit of a problem because we're not going to want to get in trouble. You can basically you can spend the entire start of the game just fighting other European powers and you expend all your resources. Oh, we found the capital. That's huge. So, this basically means we want to build ourselves a colony really close because we can milk the Aztecs for bucketfuls of cash and if you can get a lot of cash, especially quite early in the game, you can um, you can start to expand quite quickly. And this game is really all about making sure you expand quickly, very early. That's that's really the key. Oops. Oh, they've got the proper music too. I love the fact that they've actually got the music working. So I played this on Windows 7 before. But um, I could never get the, the music working. Whereas now I can. So I'm going to keep my ship here for a minute because what we can do is we can actually this pioneer here has a hundred tools and the Aztecs buy tools for stupid amounts of money so we should be able to milk them for what they're worth. Let's just uh, wait a little bit. If, you do, if you've never played this game um, the goal is to ultimately declare independence from your home country New Amsterdam, that's fine. Um, declare independence from your own country, and then you need to be strong enough to um, to repel the motherland as well. So I'm going to send the pioneer in. The ship's going to go in. He's going to the ship's going to pick up the, uh, the tools. Let's have a look. Who do we want? And then yes, we want Cortez. So Cortez. If we find treasure, that means they're going to transport, transport the treasure for free, so we'll choose Cortez. So what we do is we get this colonist to drop their tools, and then we put the tools in the ship, and we'll get this colonist uh, collecting lumber, because we're going to need to build uh, docks here pretty quick. So I'm just going to flog these tools as quick as I can. I'm going to head to the capital to do it. The capital pays more than any other city. We're going to have to bring some soldiers into New Amsterdam very, very quickly because the uh, Spanish the Spanish are going to going to be pretty aggressive pretty quickly. So we can push them on the price, but you really you don't want to push them more than twice, really. They're in need of tobacco and trade goods and rum, okay. Silver, and they should sell the silver pretty cheap. 25 to 213. Let's see if they'll go lower now. Okay, so they wouldn't haggle, that's fine. We now have 800 bucks, which means we can head back to Europe. We can buy goods, buy those trade goods, and um, hire some soldiers. And uh, look at building our our colony. So the key is to really, within the first few turns, secure yourself as much as you can. There's no point. Let's have a look at Europe. There's no point taking food back because it only sells for one. But there you see, you can sell, you can buy trade goods and tools extremely cheaply. So we're going to want to do that quick. Um. Is it Fire Axis? Fire Axis, I believe it was. Um, tried to remake this game. And basically, I think they failed. So, uh, I remember getting really excited about it. So they they um, they took Civilization 4. And they knew how popular this game was. Because um, there's this huge cult following behind colonization. And have been has been for a long time. Um, 
so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire some criminals. I'm going to bless them as missionaries. I'm going to send them into a colony. Because what that... And then we're going to need some troops. So I'm going to get some free colonists. Which called? We don't have any money left. Okay, bugger. Alright, we're going to have to hold off on uh, turning them into soldiers. So I'm going to leave them here. Actually, no. We'll take them with us. We'll get them to uh, pick up the uh, the muskets we have in New Amsterdam. And station them just as soldiers, just in case. I'm really curious now where um, the Spanish have got to. A little bit worried about that. So yeah, back to the uh, story. So uh, Firaxis took uh, colonization four and turned turned it into a standalone expansion. I think it was. Um, of colonization, so they try to they try to kind of make money. Basically, it was just a, a money grab, and it was a terrible money grab too because um, the game was was crap. It was basically just crap, unfortunately. Uh, and myself and a lot of other people were very disappointed. But, yeah, nothing you could do. No one else has ever come along and... Excuse me, that was my phone. No one else has ever come along and, um... Tried to redo this game right. So... We're going to head back to sell some more goods. We're going to put this missionary into the... This colony, the Aztec uh, camp there. And the idea there is that it should, in theory, I think it helps uh, them become angry with us less often. So what happens is the, the stronger you become, I'm just going to save it in case the game crashes. Oops. There you go. Uh, what did we do last time? So we did tools last time, so we're going to go trade goods. Go once. Got to be careful we don't piss them off. Yeah, okay, we'll take it. Tobacco and tools. So now because we sold them trade goods, they want tools. And I've already got tools. Let's see how much they're selling silver for. Let's see if they'll haggle this time. Yes, I'll take that. So silver goes in Europe for a lot of money. Let's see if we can sell these tools now. Tools. You see that 900. So we bought them for 200. Now they're asking a lot for that silver. So I'm going to try and haggle them down. No. They're asking a bit too much for my liking. So now we're going to head back to Europe. We're going to buy some horses this time. And we're going to make sure that those soldiers we have are mounted. Because mounted soldiers are much more uh, powerful. Plus, if they get defeated in battle soldiers uh, lose their horses but they're not destroyed completely so it kind of makes them it's almost like giving them another life in a way so we're well on our way to building our docks that's going to give us a better food source I'm still not going to check where the Spanish are even though I'm slightly concerned about it want to make sure we really just need to focus on making sure we're uh, strong enough to deal with them if they come along there's no sign of them because the Spanish and the other European powers basically they're just gonna fight you so how are we gonna do this got indentured servants I'll take I'm gonna We've got some really crappy... You only have this pool of talent on the docks. So what am I going to do? I want some more soldiers. We definitely need horses. I'm going to buy artillery. So what we're going to do, we're going to put horses in here too. So we can put our... We can turn our... Soldiers... Into mounted soldiers. And then we're gonna we've got some more trade goods and some more tools to sell to the Aztecs. So this run we're gonna 
shore up our military and we're gonna make a ton of cash too. So they're giving us a gift. Very good. And we've had someone join our Continental Congress. So these, everyone who joins gives you these uh, kind of abilities. I'll make this playthrough alternate. Ah, oh, here we go, that's what we want. Peter Minuit, Director General of the Dutch West India Company's colony in America. He bought the island of Manhattan from the Indians for 24 gold. Once Peter Minuit joins the Continental Congress, the Indians no longer demand payment for their land, so we want him because that means that this area around New Amsterdam, you see this area on the left? If we try to move there, they say e trespassing on Aztec land, either off the money, or you steal it to piss them off, or you say we respect your wishes. So Peter Minuet means that we don't need to worry about paying them for their land anymore, they just give it up freely. In the greatest traditions of colonization. So we can drop these horses in here, we can turn this soldier into a dragoon, and we can take the tools of this colonist and add them to our ship ready for sale. And when we have a surplus of food we'll be able to, uh, the horses will, will breed, they will grow by themselves. So let's get this guy producing lumber so that the carpenter shop stays supplied and we'll fortify the artillery to defend the base and then our soldiers, our mounted soldiers here can go off and find out where those Spanish are. So this is a good start. To find the uh, Aztecs so soon is ideal. We can carry on trading. We just need to make sure we stay on good terms with the um, ah we found them okay they're extremely close hmm this isn't good so do we want to have peace yes we do and this thing down the bottom here we suggest an alliance is basically meaningless because you can only you can yeah an alliance is only meaningful in terms of attacking someone else it doesn't actually mean you become proper allies so, as you can see, they've already built up their colony to be larger than ours. So, at some point, we're going to have to declare war and take that. And really, just the sooner the better. Because, again, I'm just going to save it because I don't know about this in Windows 10, but this game did used to crash quite a lot. So, trade goods again. Ooh, that's not much. So, you've got to be really careful not to uh, piss them off when you're trying to sell something because once they've said no to a certain good you can't offer it again until you've offered them something else so it can be kind of annoying so it's the tools we're really making money on we're making if we're buying them for 200 let's see that's okay we'll take that So these guys, you can see here, Aztec City alarmed by the Spanish. Whereas up here, we have Aztec City alarmed by the Dutch. So they get alarmed by whoever's closest and has power, really. And the more troops we have, the more alarmed they get. The more alarmed they get, the more dangerous they become. So next we're going to build a stockade. To make sure that we don't get, uh, we can't. If we get attacked, the chances of uh, us losing buildings or, or things like that is uh, smaller. Yes. So we don't want to send this soldier. He's doing exploring. We don't want to send him too far, really. We've seen pretty much enough. We can send a, a ship down there. Now, Viceroy Gamer in honor of our recent wedding to our first wife, we have graciously decided to raise your tax rate by 1%. The tax rate is now 1%. You may, if you wish, kiss our royal pinky ring. I love that little bit of humor. So you can either kiss his pinky ring, or we can throw all our food away and it becomes a boycott. 
The problem is if we do that now, because we've got a food uh, deficit, one of our colonists will starve. So he has us over a barrel. As you can see there, we've got a food deficit. So yeah, that would have led to the death of one of our colonists. So I'm going to take the ore. Uh, that's all we can really sell at the moment. And I'm going to flog it. Um, this is probably about right for a first episode, I reckon. Um, I'm going to stop it here. Uh, do let me know if you're enjoying this. I'll, I'll carry on, just because I, I want to play this a bit more. I really do. I really do like this game. It develops. It's got a nice pace as you uh, progress, and you you end up building quite a big colony, and then you can end up taking over quite a lot of the map. Um. Yeah, and the, the the fights can be really quite difficult. You can lose a lot, a lot of troops uh, going to war. So, <laughs> I love that music. All right, I'm going to stop it here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, rather bizarre, I don't know, unexpected look at the classic colonization. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, see you in the next one. Ciao for now, boys.